Have you tried adding measures to field parameters in Power BI before? What if I tell you that by doing that we can easily replicate a user interface similar to what's possible with calculation groups? Something like this. Allowing report consumers to suit reports to their analytical needs. All of that without installing any tools, writing any codes and sticking to Power BI's GUI. It would be mind-blowing, right? Well, in today's video I'm going to show you how to do that. Let's roll the intro. Hello and welcome to Bilingual Analytics. My name is Roland and I'm here to help you to learn more about Power BI. If this is your first time around here, then please start by clicking on the like and subscribe buttons so you wouldn't miss my Power BI tutorials and shorts. It means a lot to me and helps others to find content like this. The inspiration for this demo comes from calculation groups. While field parameters cannot provide that sweet measure reduction that we can achieve by implementing calc groups, we can get a very similar design within Power BI. It would help to keep rows and columns or X and Y axis dynamic, creating a superb report consumption experience. Let's hop over to Power BI and see two ways of achieving that. I am going to reuse the data model that I have been using for the field parameters videos. On the first page, I have a matrix where the rows are already set up to be dynamic. It is based on the field parameter called dimension. Now let's create a field parameter with measures. We need to start with the exact same steps as before, but when we get to the pop-up window, I'm going to add measures from my measure table. Before you ask, in this model, I keep all my measures in a measure table. There are pros and cons to creating a measure table or keeping all measures in the table that they are based on, but I find having a dedicated measure table in my demo files much more beneficial. Let me add last year year-to-date sales, year-to-date sales and total sales to have a few sales measures and total cost, year-to-date cost and last year year-to-date cost to allow users to select cost measures as well. Let's name this parameter measure and click on the shiny yellow button. Now it's time to format the measure slicer. I'm going to group sales measures under sales and cost measures under cost category. If you want to know how to do it, check out this video by clicking on the top right corner. Then add the measure parameter to the values field of the matrix. With this step, I just created a super flexible analysis that my users can utilize to tell their own data story. By doing this, my users can easily switch between a sales growth analysis by selecting last year year-to-date sales and year-to-date sales measures and whatever detail or row makes sense to them. Let's say for the sales team, customer details will be more relevant, while for the marketing team, product details will help more to identify how to achieve better growth results. And here comes the best part. Using the same report page, they can switch from sales analytics to cost analytics. Just by swapping the two year-to-date sales measures to year-to-date cost measures. I mean, this is just one of the many ways my report users would benefit from creating such a flexible database. Prior to the introduction of field parameters, report creators needed to add multiple visuals to the page or create that button and bookmark setup that I mentioned in one of the previous videos. All of this created a large technological depth. Now, I can create a single visual with rows and columns, and that's it. I can have a fully flexible report page. Wow. Just wow. And if we want to spice it up a bit more, we can even run a margin analysis by selecting year-to-date sales, and year-to-date cost measures. And still, keeping the rows fully dynamic, allowing everyone within the organization to personalize this view to their analytical needs. Additionally, all the regular features, such as sorting, still work. So if management is keen to see which continent contributes the most to the success of the business, they can select continent from the dimensions, then select total sales as a measure, and just click into the total sales column to sort it. This looks great, but some of you, either report creators or report consumers, would look at this and only notice a massive matrix taking up lots of valuable screen real estate. 
That's exactly where my head was, so I thought about moving away from a matrix setup and creating something that's potentially a bit more aesthetically pleasing. The next setup is going to be very similar, but this time around I use a clustered column chart. Let's jump back to Power BI. What you see right now is the exact same data or details but in a different format. Just because we would like to go with a fully flexible data we set up, we do not need to stick to matrices. I have a clustered column chart here with dynamic X and Y axes and two slicers in a horizontal setup. One at the top to allow me to select the measure or measures highlighted in blue and another one at the bottom highlighted in yellow to select the X axis or the dimension. Of course, we can tweak the colors of these slicers to look a bit more consistent with the colors of the page, but I wanted to emphasize them in this demo. And just like in the previous example with the matrix, I can easily switch between different analytics or different data stories. The best part is that it only took me a few minutes to create this setup. It's literally just switching the matrix to a clustered column chart using the buttons here and a bit of tinkering with the placement. Also, look at all the space we still have for other visual elements on the page. I would strongly encourage you to try to think outside of the box when it comes to the data visualization. Tables and matrices are great, but there is so much more to explore. And that fully flexible setup is something that we missed from Power BI before. I mean, the personalized visual option is great, but it does come with its own risks. And it requires a lot of training for our users and an understanding of the underlying data model as well. With the field parameters, I, or I should rather say us, report creators, don't have to expose the data model to report consumers. We just need to create two field parameters, set them up properly, nicely format them, and add them to a chart or a matrix. And we can do all of that using the GUI, so there's no need to install a third-party extension tool that you might not be able to do due to IT policies within your company. I'm still thinking about new and better ways of fully utilizing field parameters. Every day something new pops into my head and it's just a matter of time figuring out how to implement that with field parameters. It's like a gift that keeps on giving. With that said, I would like to hear what you think about field parameters. Have you started using them in your reporting suite? Do you feel the same way about them as I do? Let me know this and everything else that you think about them in the comment section below, along with any other questions or ideas that you have on how to get the most out of field parameters. Thanks for tuning in today. I hope that you learned something new and interesting from today's video and you will be able to implement this for your report. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe buttons before you leave or before you watch one from the above videos. Until the next one, see ya!